Cover your ears because today we'll be dropping plenty of S-bombs. That's right, we'll be talking squats. Maybe you love them, maybe you love to hate them, or maybe you're just not doing them right. Stay tuned as our expert will drop some science on the world of squats. Hello and welcome to episode four of the Science of Performance. I'm your host, Sean Russell. Today I'll be joining international fitness consultant Joe Arco in the IO8 Metabolism and Sports Science Lab at the University of Toronto to take a closer look at one of the most effective exercises you can perform, the squat. Joe, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Tell me about the dynamics and effectiveness of the squat. The squat is a full body exercise that trains the muscles of the thighs, the hips, while strengthening the bones, ligaments, and insertions of the tendons throughout the entire lower body. Squats are not only considered a vital exercise for the lower body, but considered an essential exercise for the entire body as well. Someone once told me that if I wanted big arms, I should squat. Now is that true? Absolutely. Squatting creates an anabolic environment which promotes body-wide muscle building. What are you going to show us today? Today I'm going to show you how to move safely through your basic back squat. First off, grab the barbell with a grip slightly wider than shoulder width, step under the bar, place it across your upper back, just below the top of your trapezius. For those who don't know, where exactly is the trapezius? Right up here, across the shoulders and upper back. Now, be sure to keep your shoulder blades pulled tight together and maintain a tight upper back throughout the entire lift. Now let's step out the rack. Great. Now let's start by pushing your hips back behind you. Keep your chest up and maintain an arch back while lowering yourself until the crease of your hip is lower than the top of your knee. You're gonna reverse that movement until back to the starting position. How was that? That felt good. Whoa, now that was a squat. I bet he felt that one. Now I see a lot of variations of the squat in the gym. Guys holding weights over their heads and their arms and all over the place. What's your evaluation on these different variations? Now as for variations, I see a lot of the back squat, which we just demonstrated the front squat, the overhead squat, zercher squats, and even hack squats. Generally, it's the weight position that is changing in these variations to allow for the transfer to various muscle zones. It's really up to you and your comfort zone and your goals. So, what challenge have you brought us today? Today, I'll take you through what is commonly referred to as the Jefferson lift or the straddle lift. It's generally a more forgiving exercise that forces you into an optimal position and posture. For people who have a difficult time maintaining proper posture and positioning during a regular squat, this is a fantastic alternative. First step is to straddle the bar, positioning your feet in a 45 degree angle. Then, squat to grip the bar, ensuring your chest and your back are nice and straight. Keeping your chest and head up, find the best leverage position while keeping your feet planted. Lift the bar up, bring the bar back down. In your opinion, what are the three important things to remember when tackling squats? Form, form, and form. Without it, you'll lose more than you'll gain. I'd like to thank Joe and Dylan, not only for joining us on the Science of Performance, but for helping us with our understanding of the form and function of the squat. Next time on the Science of Performance, we'll enter into the world of shred, discussing six packs, and discover what's behind the saying, abs are made in the kitchen. Until next time, I'm Sean Russell. Stay fit and stay focused. <laughs>